Good morning, everybody. It's nine o'clock. Nine o'clock is with me, with Father Warner. I welcome you once again to these daily reflections. And as you know, we have now been focusing on the first reading. I know that the first readings are not very popular with everybody, but we have to learn God's word. So uh, today's text is taken from the book of the prophet Haggai, chapter two, verses one to nine, and I've entitled today's teaching. He who throws dirt always loses ground. So let's open our Bibles. We are in Haggai chapter 2 verses 1 to 9. I'm going to read this text with you and for you. In the second year of King Darius, in the seventh month, on the 21st day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the prophet Haggai saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, and say, Who is left among you that saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Is it not in your sight as nothing? Yet now take courage, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord, take courage, O Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Take courage, all you people of the land, says the Lord. Work, for I am with you, says the Lord. According to the promise that I made you when you came out of Egypt, my spirit abides among you. Do not fear. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once again in a little while I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land and I will shake all the nations so that the treasure of all nations shall come and I will fill this house with splendor says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine says the Lord of hosts. The latter splendor of this house shall be greater than the former says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give prosperity says the Lord of hosts the word of the Lord thanks be to God now the date of today's reading is known precisely to us thanks to the details that are given to us in the text itself it, we know that the date was the 17th of October in the year 520 BC it was the day of the festival of tabernacles. Now, Haggai had sailed into his people for their selfishness. We see this in chapter 1. Why? Because it was the Lord who released them from captivity under the Persians. But now, having come back home, they cared only about their own creature comforts. While the Lord's house in Jerusalem was lying in ruins. Now that their conscience was stirred by God through the prophet Haggai, the work on Solomon's once glorious temple had begun under the leadership of Zerubbabel, who we know is the governor, and under Joshua, the high priest. In that sense, if you see the governor and the high priest working together, church and state literally had decided to work together. And many wonderful things happen when church and state work together. I know today, because of the history uh, of the 1940s etc and of the nationalistic movements across the world very often church and state are frowned upon but that's not entirely the case there have been several cases where it works together provided the two are respectfully of each other and don't use one another and this was a great uh, way in which church and state work together now today's text is the third of the five dates that are mentioned in the book and these dates if you look at the prophet Haggai are very very precise we know that people had gathered around the temple which was in the process of being built the occasion of this gathering was the festival of tabernacles which was one of the major festivals of the Jews it is on this occasion that the prophet Haggai delivers an oracle or a message and this oracle was necessitated by what one could only be termed or could only call 
or, or could say was publicly driven uh, criticism. People were now publicly criticizing the work on the temple. Who are these people? It seems quite likely that these were some octogenarians, people in their 80s, um, elderly people in their 80s, who had in their youth, while they were in Jerusalem, before the Babylonian captivity could take place, they must have been young men. Um, they, perhaps young, may have been only 10 years old, but they had seen Solomon's temple before they were taken into captivity. And now having come back after 70 years, remember the Babylonian captivity was 70 years as prophesied by uh, the prophet Jeremiah. Now these young men who were taken as young men into Babylon have come back to Jerusalem uh, under the Persian king Cyrus. Now look at Solomon's temple and they begin to compare the two temples the old temple and the new temple, the temple that was destroyed by the Babylonians and the new temple. And they have begun to express their opinions, perhaps rather publicly, causing uh, this construction team of the governor and the high priest to feel very disheartened. And I can I understand what this is. Thankfully and thanks be to God when I built St. Jude's Church, the parishioners of St. Jude's Church were so kind to me. I never ever faced interference and I think this was something and this is something I gave to the architect too I expressed in my mind and I gave him a free hand after telling him what were our needs and then we worked together but the wonderful thing was I never had interference from parishioners I've known some projects very sadly that have been shipwrecked literally because of people who constantly you know with no no, no degree in architecture uh, want to interfere in a church building or no degree in, in construction, want to interfere in repairs. So I think even we priests, we must be humble enough to understand that this is not our level of expertise and therefore uh, while we are trustees and we should care for it, we need to go to the right people. Yeah? If you ask me about finances, I, uh, I can barely manage my own. Uh, therefore, I should not be the one who has been taking financial decisions and therefore we have in every parish in Mumbai. Um, a finance committee of people who are experts. So I think I made the point here that uh, we can see that Zerubbabel and Joshua were very disheartened because of the criticism that they were, must have been facing and we know as I said it was the feast of the tabernacle so the criticism was rather uh, intense. Now uh, let's talk about criticism also. So criticism my dear friends is helpful if, if it comes from those who have their hands, as in this case, in the mortar, which what I mean is you need to, you have a right to criticize if you are part of a project. Yeah, I think we have too many armchair uh, parishioners sitting in their chairs in their home and lecturing the parish priest or lecturing a group of people as to how they should do something. And they will always say this, when they change, then I will go and help the church. Now, let's call this a lie. Yeah, this is nonsense. Okay. Now, if you see the uh, Abraham Lincoln uh, recalling his words, he once said something very interesting. He said, he has a right to criticize. So that's why I said criticism is a good thing. He has a right to criticize, said Abraham Lincoln, who has a heart to help. And this is very crucial. Of course, criticism is good. I'm not closing myself to criticism. But are you part of the problem or are you part of the solution? Most people are part of the problem. They want to sit out and and uh, mind you, uh, it's not easy, you know, while very often we say somebody ought to be thick skinned and don't bother father and you know, let it be, you know, unhealthy criticism because it comes from an unhealthy heart has often put down many good priests, many good priests, yeah, especially by those who want to help a parish and I'm generalizing here, I, I'm sure there are some very genuine cases where they wanted to help and they were kept out of it by Western groups. We, I've seen that story both ways. I'm addressing those specifically who sit out and criticize the church. So if you have a heart to help, great. Otherwise, I think we should be silent. Now, again, I want to say this. While we should never dismiss a critic too glibly, we should neither take them too seriously. Yeah. So don't let everybody's criticism affect you because there are some people who can go into uh, 
a lot of uh, depression because you know they are constantly being uh, criticized by others or somebody criticized them now don't take critics too seriously i always uh, uh, remember that line which i read many years ago that a statue was never erected in honor of a critic a statue remember this that a statue was never erected in honor of a critic now in this case these old men these octogenarians of israel had a lot of unsolicited advice to give which was turning out to be a dampener when what was really needed in this situation was every ounce of encouragement you know criticism when given should always be weighed in the context and the situation of the circumstances look what's happening here the people have come after 70 years from exile the land as you you you're in chapter 1 Uh, is barren there is famine there is a difficult life and in these tough situations somebody must have been trying to put up a church a temple in our case a church building and everybody is standing and saying are no marble no granite hello can you give us some money for your marble and granite <laughs> yeah it's very easy to talk uh, i know from putting up a church in st jude's the sleepless nights that i had and i say this again i am very grateful to the people of st jude's my former parish for the complete support they gave me i wish every priest would have parishioners as loving as those of st jude i hope the parishioners of st stevens don't feel bad that i say this but i want to give credit where it is due now in the face of such negativity hagai brings the words of encouragement to the construction team clearly god wanted this construction team as we heard to take courage for while it is very easy to comment on what was the memory of some past glory of the temple the work of god is carried out by a few devoted people was not to be trifled away by a few critics god was very clear about this god was clearly on the side of the builders and not on the side of the critics in this case hagai therefore reminds the construction crew yes i keep calling joshua and zerubbabel the construction crew hagai reminds them of the promise that god made to them and he says I may go back to that promise when I which I made to you way back when you were in Egypt see that line according to the promise verse 5 that I made to you when you came out of Egypt and in doing so you know the prophet Haggai makes Exodus the book of Exodus the touch point for his promise what do I mean by making the touch point for his promises Haggai is saying you really want to know whether God keeps his promises or not go back to the beginning go back to this the second book of the bible and you will see through from year to year look from year to year look how thick this bible is from year to year god is saying i have kept my promises take courage why are you getting so discouraged he has always kept his promises and he won't let a few critics get in the way of building his temple or in your way my dear brothers and sisters don't allow a few critics to weigh you down i know many people who do good just give up because they can't take it any more don't give up this temple my ministry your ministry your work your goodness for the society your goodness for the church your goodness for wherever you're doing wherever you're doing good work this work this temple in this text is the lord's doing and remember no human critic no matter how well qualified they were could challenge the work or the will of god what was considered in the past as magnificent see the last words on or verse 9 what was considered in the past as magnificent the latter splendor of this house that means the new one shall be greater than the former what was considered in the past as magnificent would be in reality says god a pale shadow of what god has planned for this new temple so he tells zerubbabel and joshua take courage take heart don't give up don't give up i am with you says jesus i want to say this to you again and again my dear friends so so few are watching and who are going through some kind of depression feeling i have done so much for other people i get no love no appreciation i get criticism i get hatred i want to tell you this beautiful text of today assures us such a beautiful text verse 4 yet now take courage take courage so there is a message in this text for all of us who labor in the vineyard of god either in the religious life or simply in the service of jesus or simply as a good christian wherever you are you know we are often handed projects that few would dare to touch with a barge pole 
Yeah, St. Jude's in my case was one such example. Few people in, in 40 years, I remember a priest telling me, want to just go to that parish, finish three years and get lost from there and they'll make you parish priest somewhere else. God had another plan. No priest wanted to touch that, that, that building or that project with a barge pole. But also there would have been, I'm sure, many who felt very compelled to stand in line and criticize the project, criticize me, criticize anybody. It didn't work. You know, I always say it was God's time. St. Jude's Church was built because it was not I who did it. It was the Lord's time. He had decided that he wanted this church built at a particular time in this particular place. And in three years, we collected the money. In three years, in that period, we got our permissions. We built the church. In three years, everything was up. And we got our permissions. Every single one of them is in place. So do not give up, my dear friends. Remember the words of scripture taken from today's text. Take courage. Take courage. Now, I want to say this. There are no coincidences in God's mighty plan. Because I'm speaking to you uh, and I'm teaching you this text on the eve of the 10th anniversary of the Archdiocese and Heritage Museum in Mumbai, of which I'm the director. You know, when I first... Uh, desired to build a museum to preserve and promote the patrimony of the Catholic Church, no less than our dear Cardinal uh, Oswald Gracious, the Archbishop of Bombay, discouraged me. I remember him telling me, you are a priest first. Uh, but also to say to his credit, and I must admit this quite publicly, he has often held my hand and apologized for the initial discouragement. He is today our principal patron and tomorrow he will be releasing a coffee table book presenting 110 pieces of our museum. This book will be available for sale and it, I trust me, it's a treasure uh, to have. I wish many of you would buy this. Uh, I, we're going to price it at 2000 rupees, but it is worth every penny of that uh, amount. And I think for those who would like to give a meaningful Christmas gift to others, this is worth it. Yeah. Uh, this is something that every family needs to have because the book covers not just the pieces, it talks about the history of the Archdiocese of Bombay and it talks about uh, liturgical uh, pieces, how they were made, etc. It's a beautiful book. Uh, most of this work has been done by our assistant director, Joynel Fernandez. Now, having said that, um, I know I have been often discouraged by critic critics, both, both mildly and publicly, for the works that I've done. As I said, St. Jude's uh, Church being a case in point. But I want to end by saying this. When the Lord wills, he will show you the way and God will use you. If you find yourself working for Jesus but being criticized and pulled down by some, some, and know that this, they are always a few some, yeah? take heart. Take heart today from the words of scripture that says, take courage. Finally, I want to say something even to critics because I think, you know, sometimes we put too much of burden on good Catholics who take and absorb and absorb all the hurt and the pain that people unfairly give them. I have something to say to these critics and I don't say this with anger or hurt because, you know, somebody might say, oh, Father, are you upset? Are you having a bad day? No, 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 no. I'm having a perfectly good day. Yeah, I want to say this to the critics. Do not sit around. I'm going to quote scripture to you. Do not sit around living in idleness, mere busybodies and not doing work. These are not my words. These are the words of St. Paul in the second Thessalonians chapter 3. Being busybodies, not doing work and idle and sitting down and criticizing everybody. If you can't be of use, get out of the way. Your parish doesn't need miserable people your parish parishes need especially in covid times we need people who are going to encourage the clergy push them i don't know whether you ever go to your fathers and say father i i miss church i miss you i miss it i i want to come back that will make your priest feel enthused he will want you to do something there are many people who don't even and i'll say this even in saint stephen's parish i've been saying it please come and meet us who never come and meet us at all i don't know many of my parishioners if you keep coming and saying, Father, we, we, you know, we see you, we miss you, we want to come back to church, let's get the youth group going, let's go this, Father, we got lots of plans. Wow. So we need critic, uh, we need supporters, we don't need critics. Yeah? I'm not saying that we don't need criticism, yeah? but just to merely criticize doesn't make sense. So I want to end today's teaching with the words that I began with the title. 
he who throws dirt always loses ground he who throws dirt always loses ground why because you're throwing dirt from under your own foot after some time you yourself will slip and fall okay so i hope this teaching has helped you i've shared some of my own personal thoughts in this teaching as i said the uh, books of the old testament are not easy now um, i also want to make this uh, before we pray i i want to encourage you to please share the word of god um, i don't know for some reason but i find that the uh, when we started doing the old testament books the viewership just dropped yeah everybody wants the new testament which is easier to relate to but i think we need to also take on a challenge yeah and study the works of the old testament so i want to make an appeal if you can please share these videos with everybody it's very important that you do it i know some of you receive it but you don't pass it on please do that it is helpful to us uh, it encourages our team also uh, when we see that many more people are watching and reading god's word if you want also i will send you the text format of this each morning uh, send me a whatsapp message on 9820242151 9820242151 what i will do is i will send you the text in the morning put you on a whatsapp mailing list and also send you the video uh, by the afternoon and as a bonus as some of you might know i send you a recipe uh, just about lunch time it doesn't mean that i'm cooking the same thing every day it's one of my favorite recipes that i like to share with you yeah so now having said that let us with great joy thank jesus and pray the father son the holy spirit amen lord thank you we come into your presence so grateful for everything that you do for us thankful for our churches thankful for the ability to pray thankful for the worship yes lord we miss our worship we will miss coming to church i miss my people we feel so empty lord Today I want to pray for all those churches that are being built across the world to honor you Lord so that your people may gather together in peace and worship. I want to pray for those churches whose projects have got stuck with government, got stuck because of local politics, even perhaps not moving because there's no money, especially in the smaller parts of India where priests really struggle with such small budgets to put up a church. Lord, I want to lift up all of these churches that are struggling. Nothing is impossible to you, Lord. And through your work, through your hand, through your power, I pray today that miracles after miracles take place in all these churches, that they get some permission, they get some money, they get some source that will make them feel encouraged. I want to pray today for our priests who take on such projects. So much of their life, Lord, so much of their worry, their struggles that they go through may even alter them, make them even bitter at times. I want to pray for them that they may not lose heart. I want to thank you also, Jesus, that when I built St. Jude Church, you made things so easy for me. Today, when I think about it, yes, there were problems, there were such hard and difficult days, but today I feel I can't even remember those because it was your time. And I thank you for being merciful and kind to me. I want to thank you for all those donors who contributed towards our church in St. Jude's and Maladies. I want to pray that our parishioners there may never forget every single benefactor, donor, no matter how small their contribution was. I want to pray today, Lord, for many, many Catholics who desire to work in your church but have left serving the church because they feel or have felt criticized and pulled down that listening to this today they may be drawn back to the church to serve in some way or the other i want to pray also for those sometimes who unduly unfairly continue to pull down the catholic church in public unfairly forgive them lord because they are wounding your body your mystical body the church is your mystical body. And while we priests, Lord, are merely your ministers and may fail your church, your body does not need to be wounded so much. Teach us to sit together at a table, talk to each other, understand each other, solve our differences, rather than find public means of humiliation, 
of your church. In your loving name, I make this prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you to all our donors, to the Love, Joy, Hope Foundation, to those of you who send us also some ministry, uh, some money for the ministry. I want to make this very clear. We use the money that you send for the ministry to pay salaries and if we need to do up some equipment. I have a plan also to do up a small little room which we can use as, as a regular studio because the traffic noise here outside St. Stephen's is insane. Yeah, so we need a special place but uh, just for us to carry on. Having said that, I also want to say it's not easy to do these daily talks because I have to sit down and write these talks, record them, put them out. It's a lot of work. So do support our ministry, support the Love, Joy, Hope Foundation also. Um, so if you would want to reach out to us, my number is 98202-42151. You have it by now. Uh, send me a WhatsApp message. Uh, don't forget to like this video, share this video, and if you're watching us for the first time, sus subscribe to this channel. Um, we are now at 25,400 subscribers, uh, but that is growing very, very slowly. It needs to grow faster uh, so that God's word can be spread. Every single person who watches this video must subscribe to this channel, I beg of you, and also pass it on, pass it on. God's word must be passed on. You're watching this in the confines of your home. You're so relaxed. All you got to do is hit five buttons. At the most, somebody will tell you, don't send me all of this. I don't want it. That's all right. You can take one slap for Jesus. Don't feel hurt. Don't feel discouraged. Yeah, but people need to hear God's word, uh, especially in these COVID times. God bless you. Have a lovely day. I enjoyed myself teaching you today.